Welcome to the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Jeez, we've got some big sporting names on uh, on today's show. The great Taylor Harris, uh, face of AFLW, talks about her new documentary. And Chris Goulding, or is it Golding? CG. CG. Are we so sure? Like are, we, with him. are we? Do we know what it is, Dana? I think, Goulding. It's gold. I think it's Golding. Shit, yeah, know. I know. It's I spelled Golding, but I think it's Golding. I think it might be Golding. Anyway, we love him. Mm. And uh, when Chris CG goes head to head with Swanee, he's a basketball player. Talking by the hoops. Way. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, very, very enjoyable. Another person I love is Simon Black. Mm. The other night I woke up in a sweat, Swanee. I was having a nightmare dragging my good friend out of the water. Yeah. However, it wasn't a nightmare. It's actually a true life event. I cannot wait for you to share this story with our dear, dear podcasters. So I don't want to talk myself up, but mm. I did, we did do something. I did oh. attempt something that has never been done on the show. Oh, before. my really Guinness did. Book of Records. I don't know, Granny, It's a good question. Todd McKenney's also on the show, and we tackle all the big issues. Brownie's big brown poll. Mm. Uh, we get your opinions on whether or not you like lots of small bits to eat or one big meal. Mm. Enjoy. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Lucky I didn't swear and I was just clearing my throat of apple juice. Yum, yum, everyone. From an apple. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Dino. Hello, Hello, Melbourne. Yesterday, I was getting my nails done and my nail lady, Maria, who's amazing, brought me out a little present. It was the tiniest little apple, but it wasn't one of those because she knows I'm obsessed with apples. It wasn't one of those sour crab apples, mm. you know. It was a perfectly flavoursome, what? Very small apple. It would fit in the palm of my hand, very small. What? And I took these little tiny nibbles off it, and it was perfect flavour. Like a miniature apple. Yes. Like a Sam Pang version of an apple. <laughs> exactly. Yes, All the good small. stuff of a man in a small package. I like it. I got small wow, apples. I got an apple cool. tree. Yeah. Got small apples. Like small, like like a big, yeah. like a plum, plum like a sized. Plum. Yes, yes, actually they are. No, very, an apricot sized. They're very apple. tasty. They're very sweet. It's magical. I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to have to uh, track some more down because like they were a, so tasty. It's like a bonsai tree. Of yeah, apples. it was beautiful. Mm, no, beautiful. Nice. How's everyone today? Good, Christine. Going well. Ready for a jokes are funny today. I've got a good one today in the paper. Okay. Are you going to kick it off now? Well, I think Sam will absolutely love this. Here we okay. go. Oh, here we this go. This is from Jeff. From Coburg. Let's I go. know how much you and Dino. Coburg so Lions. You and Pang love the Coburg Lions. We do, brother. Probably ran into Jeffrey at the footy. Yep. Scientists say the universe is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. They forgot to mention morons. Ah, yes. So moron that, number that's one. That's good. Yes. Moron number one, moron number two. That's Sam a, would like that one, I reckon. Some would argue there are more. Morons than protons. I think the they world. breed yeah. mm. pretty Prolif- quick. Prolific. Yeah, like prolific. rabbits. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming up, a story time, right? Where Jonathan's been meaning to tell this jet ski story involving Simon Black for weeks now. Well, no, so something it, came the, up yesterday. The pressure's getting ski. big now, man. Yes. It better be a good friggin' story. Yeah. Well, Black is, uh, anything about Simon Black is good, I would argue. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Nothing beats a cosy winter getaway. Well, or escaping to a tropical paradise. What if.com helps you make up for getaways you've missed. Plan and book everything travel all in one place. Jump online or the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. I love this. Overseas, uh, the BBC, if you're watching the the uh, the news mm. uh, during the little sports section of play here, yeah. this is tennis. Now, it seems a bit nondescript. It's just a game of tennis on the clay court. If you listen up here. Here we go. He was getting the best, the Frenchman Manuel Guinard. After a slow start, he eased through in straight sets and is one step closer to reaching week two of a Grand Slam for the first time. Lydia Campbell, BBC News. Beautiful accent, Lydia. Beautiful accent by Lydia. She's magnificent. So, yes, describing the tennis match that was going on. Uh, under it, though, uh, the little, what do they call it, the ticker tape. The, the, the ticker, the yeah, live the, news the ticker. The caption sort of thing. The yeah. caption mm. thing underneath. So, you know, you're watching a news um, a news item yeah. and then underneath you'll have little items just coming through, just flicking through the yeah. ticker underneath. We all know that. Mm. Uh, well, at the time, obviously Manchester United has just won the league championship in the soccer. City. Uh, Manchester City. Yep. Uh, so clearly 
someone who was in charge of the ticker, oh. he's a big Manchester City fan, <laughs> and just thought he'd start throwing some shade <laughs> towards his Manchester United <laughs> rivals. That's pretty really good. He absolutely loves it. So, <laughs> so he's, uh, he's going along, they're reading the news, and what came up was, uh, was Manchester United uh, rubbish. <laughs> and it, on the ticker, and then it just stayed on there. Manchester United <laughs> rubbish, and then it moved on to say, rain will be everywhere. Right. <laughs> so moments later, they've obviously realised their mistake, BBC, got the complaints, the switchboards went up. Did they the news, acknowledge it? The newsreaders had to put out an official apology. Really? A little earlier, some of you may have noticed something pretty unusual on the ticker that runs along the bottom of the screen with news, making a, a comment about Manchester United, and I hope that Manchester United fans weren't offended by it. Behind the scenes, someone was training to learn how to, to use the ticker and to put text on the ticker, so they were just writing random things, not in, in earnest, and um, <laughs> oh, that comment appeared. So apologies if you saw that and you were offended and you're a fan of Manchester United, but certainly that was, you know, a mistake taken it wasn't uh, meant to appear on the screen so um that was what happened we just thought we'd better explain that to you yes oh, really the work experience boy oh man they all of a sudden yeah, he just got given the uh, ticker machine unbelievable Fantastic. don't move this is the chrissy sam and brownie podcast taylor harris an aflw star who currently plays for the melbourne demons she's such a star that she has her own statue outside of football one of taylor's true loves is seinfeld so much so that she has themed tattoos and called her dog elaine if you want to learn more about taylor make sure you check out her new documentary kick like taylor which is available on prime video from may 27 here's taylor Welcome to the show, Taylor Harris. Good morning. Hi. How was last night? You had the big uh, the big premiere of your doco? Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Obviously, I didn't expect anything because I had no idea what to expect. This has all been a bit of a whirlwind and unexpected. So, yeah, it was exciting and something that I'm sure that I'll cherish and remember with my family and friends. I saw, I saw lots of uh, pictures on Instagram of beaming faces of little girls and it made me feel great. It must have made you feel good too. It did, and there's there's a few little girls in their Auskick uniforms, but there was a few teenage girls in their NAB League uniforms as well. So that was a pretty amazing, and I guess very you know right there moment where they were dressed yeah. in footy gear and loving life. So Absolutely. that's exactly why I do anything, uh, and they were there to remind me. So it was great. It's a wonderful story, tale. Wonderful story, tale. How do you fit it all in? You've got you've got. Obviously, a star AFLW player just recently again the, made the All Australian team, which is a fantastic effort. Australian champion in boxing, and also a wedding celebrant. Yeah, I've got a good calendar. I think that's about ah. that's it. <laughs> but a, yeah, you got a PA. What's that? Yes, what? Well, not not necessarily. I just yeah, I just try and keep on top of things, and that's the only way to do it. What's the weirdest wedding you've had to officiate? Oh, not not weird. Everyone has different ideas of what their perfect day is, and I just try my best to account for that. I guess an odd one was in the park, just a couple of people, um, super casual. That was probably the most interesting, but also I really enjoyed that, obviously. I was in jeans, and it was great. Great. Hey, Taylor, back to the doco last night. So when you're watching it in the theatre, a doco about yourself, is that the first time you are watching it or were you like in the edit room and all that stuff? Yeah, that, it was the first time I watched the whole thing. Wow. I saw a really rough version, but I deliberately waited to watch it and enjoy it with Did Taylor any of it make you squirm or like think, oh, I don't look good there? Oh, the, there was a few things because this was filmed particularly over COVID time and I'd have... Um, probably too many meals at that point. And <laughs> so it, was, it made me laugh. And I actually found it really interesting that even only probably six months later, I have a, a fair different perspective on a lot of things. And naturally I've evolved even in the last month uh, and I continually am learning. So I can still, even though it was just released, but things have changed even since then. So it's it's nice to reflect back and... It was, pretty, it was a surreal experience. It's something that I'll mm. never probably do again, um, but who knows. But, uh, yeah, I definitely just made the most of it. It's certainly something that I, I wasn't – it was outside my comfort zone uh, and it, and I didn't really love all the attention, but I, but I enjoyed it and made the most of it, that's for sure. 
Fantastic. You've been an inspiration to uh, young girls around this country, Taylor, especially my little girl, uh, Olivia Brown, who absolutely, well, she probably doesn't love you as much because she's a big Carlton supporter now. You've switched over uh, to oh. Melbourne. Uh, but great news, Taylor, and you're one of the drivers of this, uh, you know, a, a, a figurehead, if you will, of the game of AFLW. Now the girls' players are going to double for next season and going forward for all the girls across the board. How good, Taylor? Yeah, thank you. Well, thanks, Brownie, and say hi to Olivia for me. And also, you can find out the real story about why I shifted from Carlton if you watch the documentary. Oh, then... a bit of sizzle. <laughs> a bit of sizzle. <laughs> bit of sizzle, but uh, I guess, yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty incredible time in AFLW, and that time is, you know, no more incredible than it is for those young girls and your daughter in particular. So couldn't be happier. It's happening right now, and, and I love that I'm part of the phase that, you know, has to go through the interesting mm. time, but I know that that is all for, you know, in, in a short period of time when young people can grow up and ha- not have these hurdles. Absolutely. You are a pioneer, Taylor it, it was an interesting time for you. You sort of, uh, you know, very, very quickly and unexpectedly were all over the news. I imagine that was a very harrowing time for you. What? Yeah. What, it, yeah. It was, yeah, strange, I guess is the right word, but it was one of those things that I just had to take in my stride, otherwise it would consume me and I just, you know, tried to make the most of it and saw the light in any given situation and I guess that's all you can do really. I, I'm, You know, you three know as well as anyone that life throws you a few curveballs and you've just got to go with it. Mm. Taylor Harris. Very interesting. That doco is going to be great. Mm. Kick like Taylor. It's available on Prime Video from May 27. Uh, thanks for coming on and can't wait to watch it, mate. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your morning. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Good morning, gang. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. What if it, if you're booking a holiday, what if it, it's Aussie for travel? Courtney, photos of Courtney Kardashian's wedding food have been circulating. It's a bit, they got married in a, in a ceremony in Italy. Mm. Wouldn't that be a, a great to go to a wedding in Italy? Magical. I think Sam's been to one, hasn't he? He has. Yeah. And these are the portions, Brownie. I'm holding it up now. It's a big plate with one, like, twist of spaghetti. There you go, Dino. Okay. And it looks beautifully, like, twirled and beautifully made. It's like the perfect mouthful. You can see there, there's the size of the tongs. Yeah. Well, everyone's outraged at the size of the portions, but to me, this is perfect. Perfect. Mm. And it came up again last night. It's very orange. Or is it the lighting? I think it might. That might be the the, the lighting. It looks yeah. like a Napoli. Mm. It looks like a little tomato based number, which yeah. is delicious. My favourite sorts of food. So last night I went to a restaurant opening, Moon House in Balaclava. It's gorgeous, by the way. Um, and Chinese, Cantonese food, mm-hmm. and I was so excited. And my friend who I went with, Scotty, I, we were driving there, and I said, "I'm so excited because." I just know it's going to be my favourite type of food, which is lots of little things. Yeah, love that. Lots of little things. And he said, well, we're the exact opposite because I like one big meal. And I it it struck me, and then with the furor of this, mm. it struck me that the sorts of meals that you order, whether it's lots of little things or whether it's one big thing, is the great divider of the human race. Uh-oh, is it time for a... <laughs> What do you prefer? Lots of little things? If you were at a wedding and you got this Mm. little tiny perfect mouthful of Mm. pasta, along with lots of other things, remember, would you be upset? Or is this your idea of heaven? To to go further, we left Moon House and went to Chicholina because Scotty was still hungry. I can't yeah. believe you didn't go to Nam Longs. What's wrong with you? Yeah, Too far about. away. We were in St Kilda. Oh, okay. So I went to Chicholina. I ordered a, a side, two sides. Scotty ordered a big risotto. Yep. Mm, there you go. You know, I, one uh, big meal. I'd argue you don't feel uh, overfed or don't feel full when you have a lot of little meals. And also variety is the spice of yeah, life. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. 13, 24, 10. Are you lots of little bits or... 
one big meal. It's, it's the great divider one. of human of human beings, yes. I believe. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. Paul, it is. Brownies are big and Paul. Yeah. Over the last week, I've seen it come into sharp focus that people are one of two things and never the twain shall meet. They either like a lot of small things when they're eating or one big thing. Yeah. And Courtney Kardashian's wedding photos came out. There was photos of the food. One perfect little mouthful of perfectly cooked pasta. People are outraged. Can I can I just infer that I believe that next up would have been an arancini ball, <sighs> some sort of croquet, you know, mm. like lots of little delicious... Little a few oysters. Yes. So last night I went to a restaurant opening, Moon House. It's beautiful, by the way. The prawn toast was like a knockout. And I was so excited because a little lobster dumpling would come out, down the hatch. A little prawn toast would come out, down the hatch. Fresh oysters, yum, yum, yum. Lots yeah. of little varieties. Mm. My friend who I went with, Scotty, he likes a meal. But you he know, his a, own meal. He's expecting lamb shanks or something on the menu. Well, just a meal, you know, a mm. proper sit-down meal. Yes. So we had we, we went out for one we after Moon a House. I wasn't really oh a carvery. <laughs> that is great. Thirteen twenty four ten. What are you? Lots of little things, big things. Even the other day when we went out with um to celebrate Vic moving yeah, on to a, to a new life. Did you notice that I went one step further? They've got an hors d'oeuvre menu. Oh, yeah, I did. So even smaller than the appetisers mm. and the sides. Looked like a mini high tea tower. It was amazing, and I ordered everything that from that. Good. Pretty, I ordered everything from the hors d'oeuvre menu. Beverly from Burwood. Beverly. <laughs> Hello, Chrissy. Hello, friend. I told you, I stalk you. <laughs> yes. Now, Bev. Beverly, Beverly and I have a history... Can you you tell the good people of Melbourne in this studio, Beverly? So I work in, um, actually work in a supermarket, and the gorgeous Chrissy came up to me, and the first thing she said was, "Oh, you're very glamorous. <laughs> what a beautiful human being!" Mm. So, you did you look yeah. so glamorous? The makeup and hair, and you had a beautiful jacket on. And I just well, thought, was, gosh, you know, you're so glamorous, Beverly. Bev, on the CCTV it, monitor, did you yes. notice Swan stuffing cans of food into her bag? <laughs> no, not no. at all. She's she's even more beautiful in the flesh. Yep. Oh. She's a bit like Winona Ryder. Very similar. Me. Yes, she's yes. She's got uh, hot yeah, hands. Uh, Doesn't need to steal, but does for the thrill. <laughs> but, Br- Brownie, we need to have a word. What's my name, mate? Uh, well, I like to go with Bev. <laughs> <laughs> you said that he'd say that. <laughs> Exactly right. Good job. All right, we're going to speak through this. We're going to get back. Okay, we're going to get through. What are you? Lots okay. of little things or one big thing, I'm Beverly? Lo- I'm lots of I'm lots of little things. I'm vegan, so usually I end up with one little thing. Oh, okay. you normally end up with a pumpkin arancini ball, and that's it. Interesting. That's one for littles. Adrian from Flemington. Lots of little things or one big thing. Yeah, I'm with you, Chrissy. Lots of little things. Yes, a couple of littles. Jeez. Couple of littles. Down to yes. a strong lead. Rihanna from Werribee. Congratulations on the baby and. What is your favourite? Lots of little things or lots of big things? One big thing. Oh, hey, um, I'm definitely not pregnant and that must be the wrong person. That was, <laughs> that was a joke about ASAP Rocky and ah, Rihanna. Ah, ah. <laughs> um, definitely the small things, the small little meals are the best meals to share with people, I think. There you go. Three with, littles. Yep, I Katrina would. from Monbok. Katrina, lots of little things or one big thing like my dad and my friend Scotty. Definitely lots of little things. A good degustation menu or tapas are amazing. Yes, tapas. Have the Spaniards have it I mean, in the bag. We've had a lot of females here. I think mm. all of our calls have been female. Mm. Uh, they lean towards the little things. Oh, let's see what Robin says. Robin? Robin's a female too. 100%. Chrissy, lots of variety, lots of little things, okay. yummy things to taste. I love this. I thought I was unusual. Well, let's see if it's a man, the female thing. Yes. Like there's differences, Christine, with Nathan. Nathan, you're the decider. How you going? Good. Good, mate. Um, well, when it comes down to it, you need your plate for filled with food, you know. You want to leave satisfied. You want to know that you got your money's worth. You don't want to sit there and watch other people eat their little things while you're smashing up this one. You're a big thing. Yes. You're yes. one big, big thing, thing, Nathan, from Clyde. Are we doing like a Palmer and chips and all that stuff? Um, whatever, you know, it could be a palmer one day, steak the other, a big bowl of pasta, yes. Nathan, whatever the day don't, feels. Don't you feel like Jabba the Hutt after and you feel all uncomfortable when you go too far, man? 
Put that in your, you know, you've had a good night there. You, you put your money in, now you're done. That's you can right. go home and have a good rest. He likes his steaks still kicking too, I reckon, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Part. Hey, ten, Medium, right? 10K ah. a day in May to everyone. But, hey, overwhelmingly... Overwhelmingly, lots of small things. And so great to hear your voice, Beverly. That was such a lovely exchange at Woolies in Armadale yesterday. Good on you, Bev. Speaking of small things, what's coming up? <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melvin. Welcome to you. <laughs> Wednesday. She's very energetic. I'm super and energetic I'm telling today. You now, I'm telling you now. Yeah, forget right. about the good morning. Just tone it down. Dial it right? back. It's, I've got two hours here, I and know. I can't. It's if you just if you're at this level, you're leaving yourself no wiggle room. I know. Mm. I think I'm too enthusiastic in life in general. I think that might be my problem. Good morning, Samuel. Good morning, Christine. I, the other thing is too. I want you to leave some. Wiggle. Yes. I want you to leave some wiggle room, because after this song... What? I'm about to do something that's never been done on this show before. What? That's right. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's right, a talk break under vasectomy. 10 minutes. No, I'm going to do a vasectomy. <laughs> is this why... Um, seems moot at this point. Seems is, unnecessary. Is this why there's a woman called Phoenix waiting outside the studio? <laughs> that's, not her, that's not her real name. That's her dancing name. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to... I, I don't even know. After tell. this oh, song, no, don't tell. Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. And if you've just tuned in, something is about, something's about to happen that's never happened on this show. So Christine was wise to turn the air conditioning on this week because I'm starting to get a bit hot. I'm already heating up. <laughs> I mean, I've got a lot of segments. Yeah, you know what I mean? do. So we've done. Usually, I would just do one segment, and that would be the break. Yeah. One time, I did five segments in five minutes. Five in five. Five in five. I think you did six and six. Correct, Christine. No, it's not time for... What? What do you think? Seven, seven. seven and seven. Well, that would be too easy. I'm doing seven and six. What? What? In a dancing flame. No, hold on. No, hold on. I've written down Mate, the time. we're running out of time. I oh, know, we've got to wait. The time. Listen, you ready? we got to start now, so we got to start. Now. Now. In a dancing flame. A dancing fly. you got to work out who's in the sky. This is where I play you. Uh, I play you uh, something, and it's obviously it's from television or movies, and you have to identify the scene. That yeah. it, and it takes place traditionally, obviously, in the air. The sky is involved, some sort of aircraft. Twenty. I, I've got to give you one each. I've got to stay true. So here's the first one. Six bucks in my right nut says we're not landing in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's John Candy. Oh, I love that. Heinz Heinz well done. I just wanted to play it. Brownie, here's one for you. But it's a great film. As soon as you know. No, no, wait. Who's our backup? No such thing, old buddy. This is a one-way ticket. Once we cross that border, we're on our own. What is that? The chopper? Predator. Boom! Schwarzenegger Strong. and Carl Weathers. Two for two. Yeah. Couldn't Dutch have been more. and Dylan. Well done. Couldn't be more supportive. Hey, well, Keep that's, going. that's the first one. What's the second minutes. one? Second one. Time for mugshot. Oh! Oh, my God. Forgotten. I'm going to show, I, I throw you up a name and you just, you tell me if they've been arrested or not. And I show you have they had, if they've got a mugshot or a mug not. I'm on board. Christopher McDonald. A.K.A. Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore and Marty from Hacks, the current series oh, on, yeah. on Stan. Stan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Christine, Shooter McGavin, Marty from Hacks, Christopher McDonald, Mug Shot or Mug Not? Mug Shot. Mug Shot is correct. Oh. No. Where is it? There it is there. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. I only mentioned it because in October 2017, he was arrested for drunk driving. He lost control of his Porsche, crashed into the gas meter. You know, before the cops took him into custody, you know what he said? What? I was in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> he led with it. Yeah, you he led with it. He led with it and it didn't matter. You're going to try. He, went, he, he got arrested and was told to sober up. <laughs> that was number two. What was next? Now it is time for some to my dumb thoughts. Hear me out here. It may be for a longer discussion, but this random thought pertains to the English curriculum in high school education. Across the country. Mm. In six years of high school, I read two books, To, to Kill a Mockingbird and The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. Mm-hmm. My random thought is, I have no interest in Romeo and Juliet. I'm sure I'm not alone. No. The teenagers out there should be allowed to pick the books they read in high school because it's about it's about reading and learning and comprehending. So if a, if a kid wants to read... Jonathan Brown's Life in Football, That's be- in, in year nine, yep. that's better than him re- not reading it all that year. I've just had the argument with my daughter 
Olivia is doing grade seven. She yeah. had a choice of five books. Yeah. Uh, picked the wrong book. She went for The Haunting because she's into scary movies. Oh, I love yeah. The Haunting. Now she's, now she's, now she's cooked. And she's cooked. Meanwhile... <laughs> If there's another kid in that class who picked Stephen Kernahan's book, Sticks, and he's reading that for his uh, year 10 uh, laughing. English, he's laughing. A plus. I'm telling you, that's one for a bigger chat. You should be uh, uh, you should be allowed to pick your books. I think it opens it up to scamps making terrible decisions. That's your opinion. What's next? <laughs> oh. Oh. Huh. I didn't know Is that. that. What? Of course, things that come across you and I didn't really know them. I don't know everything. Two minutes, 30. Ghetto Gospel is a song by uh, a Tupac for Shakur. Mm. I didn't know that Tupac and Elton John had a had a movie a show called a song called uh, Ghetto, Ghetto Gospel. 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 I did. I've forgotten it. Banger. 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 Throw any mail for your tidbit. Oh, no, no, you can't. Oh, was on. Tupac was killed the night of Mike Tyson fight in Las Vegas. Okay, that was pretty good. Two minutes to go. How many segments have we done? Or oh, no. Jackie, you're up. Jackie, Get you're up. This is number five. Ghetto Gospel by Tupac oh, featuring Elton John. Tune or not a tune? No, that's not a tune. No, oh, you're, that's a wrong answer. Still a segment, though. You're a hard man. It's a wrong answer. answer. All right, it's not a tune. Still All right. A what are you up to, number six? Chrissy, Sam and I don't want to do this with a leg in the air. Not on this day. Not on this day in 1984. Former NBA star Charles Barkley gained 20 pounds in 48 hours to avoid getting, to try to avoid getting drafted by Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> How would you do that? The, I'll tell you, the 76ers said that they'll get down to 285 and we'll draft you. He got down to 283 and then he realised, I don't want to be drafted by you. So the mission was to gain a few pounds. He went to Danny's. He had two Grand Slam breakfasts. What well, was two pan- two buttermilk pancakes, two eggs, bacon, sausages, mm. juice. Then he went to lunch. Then he went to the steakhouse. And then he did it all next day. And the next day he weighed 302 pounds. Yes. Wow. Charles, how good. Wow. That happened on this day. And then he ended up getting drafted by 76. Is it? No, not on this <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah. we've got that. Yeah. So that's six in six. You've got no, hey, almost did, a minute to I, spare. I, I did the tidbit for it. That's seven in six. So that's, but I couldn't. Well, let's do eight and six then. May, oh, I, offer you, may I offer you a tidbit? Charles Barkley. you got 34 seconds, Pat. Well, take it for a walk. I might take it for a walk. In his eight seasons at Philadelphia, his team, um, his weight was a consistent issue, but it was celebrated one night by the team where the team offered fans, because Charles weighed 260 pounds at the time, the team offered fans free entry to the game if they weighed more than 260 pounds. <laughs> Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> if you weighed more than 260, if you weighed more than Charles, you got in for free. Bang. Ball, Seven, eight, three, and six. Three, two, two one. one. You You're did it. I'm impressed. How? Very good. How? Magic. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Let's go. Win a brand new Mitsubishi Mirage just by hearing one noise. One noise. It's <laughs> back. Sam Pangs. Jokes are funny. Yes, indeed. We're going to give this car away. I can feel it in my waters. Tim from Geelong, is it going to be to you? I uh, bloody hope so. I bloody hope so too. How's Moorable Street today, Tim? Uh, I couldn't tell you. It was pitch black when I left Geelong this morning. Yes, yes. Good chats. Great, Great chats. <laughs> I mean, the chemistry is electric. All right, Tim, let's go. Let's get you this car. All righty, let's go. Knock, knock. Who's there, Tim? Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes Sean Connery. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. I, I like that, I that. very it's much. Effort, isn't it? that's, a, that's a good level of dumb, that one. That's really Great good. Level. Silly, I like silly. Yeah. Tim. <laughs> I almost do want it. it again. Is, oh, yeah, do, it. do it again if you want to. Okay, do, let's always, do it again. Always better the second uh, time. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes Sean Connery. Yeah, you've nailed that again. It's very good. Tim's on fire. <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> Treat yourself to a short stack at the Pancake Parlour in Moorable Street. On you. We're not Done. paying for that, though. Thanks, <laughs> um, <laughs> Dino. You're going, you're going to Jurassic World, mate. Dominion, only in cinemas, on June you. 9. That's on you, Tim. That's on you, though, That's Tim. on you, Tim. Morris. Morris. Oh, good morning. Chris Hi, Morris. Is this the great Morris Ritz? 
No, it's not. Let's <laughs> the go. How many, many. Mor- how many Morrises are there? All right, <laughs> Morris, let's go. Um, why aren't the Greeks good at soccer? Why aren't the Greeks Ooh. good at soccer, Morris? Because every time they get a corner, they open up a fish and ship shop. <laughs> Oh, Brand, mean, Brandy <laughs> loved it. Vote Frydenberg. <laughs> I, I mean, good, I like it. I'm a old, fan of Greeks old, in fish and chip old, shops. Old school. Gold <laughs> school racial stereotype. Yeah. You know, no, but with gentle. Old school gentle racial, oh, racial man, stereotype. I, I like it. The, I, Greek, the Greek fish and chip, the, the Greeks that own the fish and chip shop in Waterbull, still the best fish and chips I've ever eaten. Are you Greek, Morris? No, I'm Italian, unfortunately. Okay. No, no, <laughs> no cover. No, okay, no, you're no. no cover at all. All right, let's go to... Oh, you've won uh, Jurassic World as well, mate, off to see it. It looks sick. Dominion. It's only in cinemas June 9. And <laughs> a nice, gentle racial stereotype. Oh, oh narrowly <laughs> from Frankston. Narrowly. Hi, Chrissy. How are you, my love? I'm okay. How are you? Do people say to you, narrowly we roll along? Yeah, usually if I want people to remember my name, I say merrily, merrily, last but a dream. But when you when you had that lady that you played netball with, I was freaking out in the car thinking, oh, my God, there's more Nerilies out there. Yeah, I know a few Nerilies. Do people... Uh, I've only ever met one at Priceline, and it's simply because they called out, Nerily, can you come to the front counter? So I wander up there and they go, no, we mean the person who works here. One of the great stories. <laughs> does, does, uh, yeah. <laughs> do people often say Nerily, get on with it? Oh, sorry. Okay. Here's my joke. Sam, I love you. I can't believe you said that to me. I love you too, Neryl. I'm just saying. Oh. Was it really? That was a, you're leading you with that anecdote? Won't love me. That was a clip. You probably won't love me after the joke. All right, here it is. What are the similarities between men and floor tiles? What are? What are the similarities between men and floor tiles? Well, if you lay them properly the first time, you can walk all over them the rest of your life. Wow. That's pretty good. Oh! <laughs> is that true, Sam? <laughs> I think it's. A, I don't know. I've James been in previous relationships be. in my life. Clearly, I'm not good at it. Jeez, now. <laughs> finding out a bit. <laughs> finding out a bit from narrowly. A few layers here from no, narrowly. No, a little bit to unpack. No, narrowly. it's like, Well, it's a, it's a generalisation. It's funny for the sake of humour. So I can't necessarily <laughs> say that that is the case all the time. It mm. depends on your specific situation. Mary. I don't like the. I don't like the. I don't like it. Yeah, but you like oh, narrowly, though. I do like she narrowly. Narrowly, you narrowly. were great. Love your energy, you mate. Joke I had, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, like narrowly. Don't apologise, narrowly. Never, Never do apologize. that. Ever. Never do that. You're off to an epic adventure into art, and it's re- really good. This book now at theloom.com.au. You go into the loom. All right. You know, fundamentally, sometimes you do have to apologise, Brandy. Mm, I wouldn't agree. Not in uh, narrowly's case, anyway. So no, nice no, job, no. Narrowly. All right. Johnny. Won't you come on? Ha, ha. Do you know that song by the Fine Young Cannibals? It's a good one. No, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) FYC. Great song, isn't it? Here if you need. (laughs) Sung by the great... No, I don't. Sung by the great... What? Roland Gift. Oh, that's magnificent. He is a gift. Okay, Johnny. You're a gift, Johnny. What do you got? You are. Uh, why is it frowned upon to do missionary in Tasmania? Ooh, this oh, is going to wow. be a river. I can feel yeah, it. We've got everything in the, today. Why is missionary frowned upon in Tasmania? Because it's rude to turn your back on family. Funny, He's just laughing in the background. The 2022. Yeah, John. Oh, slow oh, clap from John. Johnny's getting an applause from Big John. I don't, Johnny. We're we're sexist, racist, racist, and incest. Mm. In that, in Good morning to our listeners in Something for Tasmania. everyone. Someone Meanwhile, argue. the Mitsubishi Mirage is just collecting dust. Mm-hmm. Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy. Sam and Brownie. <laughs> Chris Golding, an NBL legend who recently won bronze at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. He plays for Melbourne United and he's originally from Tasmania. So I hope you oh. didn't just hear that jokes aren't funny segment. Here's Chris. Welcome, Chris. I'm so glad you didn't hear that disrespectful joke about beautiful people from the Apple Isle. I didn't hear it. I was on the lift, in the lift on the way up. No. Lucky Probably you. Probably for the best. No, no good? <laughs> you no. can imagine. Oh. You can imagine. Let's so clip it up and let's replay it to Chris it in the way It was good fun. Out. Sure. Hey, I love it. Just because Tasmania's in play and you um, you played for Mel- Melbourne United this year, but the Jack Jumpers are the team that uh, turfed you out. Mm. They're from Tasmania. They are. Bit of sweet for you. Have you thought about 
are you going to return return home of the product? You know, return of the thoughts? prodigal son? Not now. I thought if they were crap, maybe in a few years when I was washed up, I could go and save them. Super innovation, <laughs> super innovation, right there. Now they're, they're good. They are, and you know, I was I was barracking for them all year because I wanted a team from Tassie to do well, mm. um, but not that well because it came back to bite me in the end. Oof. What happened? Well, so what happened, mate? Because so they turfed you out in the semis. Yeah, in game you're the, three. You're the top team all year, and you didn't even make the finals. <laughs> Complacency. Oh, this true. seems like an attack. Oh, no, there was a big injury. There was a big injury at the back end of the you? year. Uh, yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't play game three. <laughs> All right, that's fair enough then. Yeah. Well, how was your year, by the way? Give us some, give us some numbers. Oh, so like how pretend, I played? Well, don't pretend you don't know. What your average is here? I actually don't Sorry know for sure. Mic, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. all right. That's all right. What it's microphone? What? Did you aver- I don't know averages, but I made the All NBL second team. Oh, that's a good effort. So not quite the first team on the bench or the starting five starting they only pick five do you know the basketball is the new bachelor uh yes i do felix von hoff what do you uh what do you what do you give him how do you rate him uh as a basketballer or as a potential bachelor as a as a as a date uh i would imagine the girls will enjoy his company he's a pretty uh charismatic guy what about classically handsome? What's he look? Is he uh, he's got good cheekbones? What's he? What yeah, he, um, yeah, I guess classically handsome. <laughs> big, big. I don't know if they're he's fake a or big not. Big unit. white teeth. Big yeah. smile. Does he? Oh, they're like definitely. Andrew, they're definitely. Like Andrew uh, keeps new teeth. Mm, the um, got a new everywhere it's sprouted like basketball star. So they've already started lying. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> stay down, <laughs> but he's, <laughs> he's a good guy. How would you? Uh, how would you rate him? Obviously, he's not a star. How is he as a player? <laughs> Uh, he's a good. He's a good shooter. He actually played for Melbourne United for a year. Oh, I think he's. So um, you saw him up close. Yeah, I, I know him. Um, I think his off-court interests uh, took precedence over his on-court. Oh, interests. okay. He's a what scrub. Is it, what does it say to Melbourne? <laughs> t- <laughs> he's a scrub. I don't want to. He can scrub. shoot. He can shoot the ball. Oh, that was code for he's a scrub, Sam. He doesn't have to explain <laughs> yeah, everything. Sorry, Brandy. What does right. it say, Melbourne Tigers? I didn't think the Melbourne Tigers are around anymore. Well, so they're not in the uh, in the NBL. They're in the league below uh, the okay. NBL one, kind of your VFL type situation. Yeah. And the Melbourne Tigers are a club there still, coached by Andrew Gaze. Oh, right. Um, what about Ben Simmons? Ben Simmons, what are you? What's your She's take? hard hitting. What no, are you doing? We're having well, a chat. Uh, no, I'm interested. What's your take on the whole Ben Simmons? Situation. I'm not a basketball man. I ask Sam all the time, what's your take on the whole scenario? Uh, well, it's tough. Um, purely because... Explain what the scenario is in case, you know, people aren't fully across it. He kind of dis- well, disappeared, didn't well, he? he? Well, he's at the 76ers. Yeah. And obviously he was uh, disgruntled. Mm. And then he's gone to the Brooklyn Nets in a big high-level tr- high trade. Yeah. He didn't play for the whole season and they got... Uh, bowled over in the finals mm. this year. So he cops a hell of a lot of criticism. Stephen A. Smith gave him the biggest whack Oof, I've ever Stephen heard a. for oh, any boy. athlete who's a big oh, uh, boy. journalist over in America. Oh, boy. Uh, so he seems like the whole of America has turned against him in probably parts of Australia as well. Yeah, and, and as I said, it's tough because there's obviously something going on, whether it be injury or a mental block mm, mm. That, that he's that he's having um but this is a 23 four year and i always say this, this is a 23 or four year old kid that has had everything given to him thrust upon mm. him this this fame the money everything i don't know how i would act if mm. i was a 23 year old yeah. kid that had been given half a billion dollars or whatever he's got so <sighs> it's hard to judge but i do think at the start of next year um, he'll be right, ready to go for the Brooklyn. Do next. you wish? Do you wish that he joined you in, in Tokyo and mm. won a bronze medal with you in the in the Aussies? Wouldn't that have been great? Yeah, I think it would have been really good for Ben to get him a part of our group and just Seems like you've got feel a great what it's culture. like. Yeah, exactly right. And you know, in the states, they want they want points, rebounds, dunks. We we just wanted to win. You know, it would have been good to just be a part of a, mm. a situation like that where we didn't care what you do individually, just be a part of it and come and try and win with us. CG, we want you to hang around. CG, he's my friend. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see you courtside this year. No, I was at the other mob. No, celebrity uh, Rohan. Oh, there they are. They're the cheap, <laughs> they're the cheap tickets. <laughs> Swanny's a basketball expert, and uh, you're just going to grill your next, my friend. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Yeah. It's a full NBA and basketball. Yeah, you're very, it's very surprising. Chrissy, I've always been surprised at the basketball knowledge that Chrissy Swan has every time you've come in, haven't you? I learn something new every time I come in. You're welcome. Thank you. NBA uh, playoffs are at the pointy end, as they would say, Brownie. 
the uh, conference finals. Got in the bags under my eyes from watching it all. Oh, my God. <laughs> Chris, are you keeping Between a... that and the soccer, I am cooked. <laughs> Basketball's on in the morning. You shouldn't be that. You know, like, it's at a, quite a reasonable hour for us, by the way. I, anyway, I keep strange hours. Oh, have you been keeping an eye on it, Chris? A little bit, yeah. I um, once playoffs comes around is when I really start to watch the NBA. I think the basketball goes up a notch, and um, mm. yeah, it's it's good. I, I Fair watched your, friend, huh? I watched your, Fair weather friend. I watched Sam's Heat yesterday. Put in an absolute oh, stinker. Stinker. <laughs> Shameful. No dinner for anyone in the house last night. Does Dwayne Wade still play for Miami? <sighs> no, mate, it's not 1999. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sweet Dwayne Wade. Oh, my no. God. No. I'll leave the basketball questions <laughs> yeah. this one. Um, yeah. uh, Thank you. Did you have your, before we get to have you ever have you tried out in the NBA? Yeah, last year I went um, and just did a little sort of week with the Warriors. So, really? yeah, I'm, um, and amazing organisation. You can tell why they're so successful. So I'm tipping them to take it out. Well, they're 3-0 up against Dallas, as Chrissy told me this morning. Mm. But I just wanted to ask, I'll just uh, I'll ask you, though, just for a quick tip on Game 5, uh, Boston versus Heat. Your thoughts, Chris? I think uh, Miami bounce back at home. Swanee, Boston versus Heat, Game 5. Your thoughts? I've got two names for you. Butler and Tatum. Yeah. Butler, if Butler doesn't play, they can't win. Yep. If Tatum does play, they can't lose. No. <laughs> just, just, read it. Just, just read it. Just read it. It's on the sheet of paper. She tried to take it for a walk. Be, and be careful when you wall. take him for a walk, all right? <laughs> you are like Jared Healy with a teleprompter. <laughs> Read the words. Don't take it for a walk. Listen, want- the Heat can't win if Butler doesn't play. <laughs> And they also can't win if Jason Tatum does come to play. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. That's a good point. Is it as simple as that? If Jason Tatum plays well, they win? Or not not no. quite. No, no. He's a, he's a player, though. He's a player. Um, what about you, Chris Golding, and uh, the Lakers? What, are, how, what do you think? <laughs> You're a Lakers man. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, not not good this year. Um, a couple of injuries with Anthony Davis. Obviously yes. missed a lot of the year. But that looked very painful. I think they're going to have to shake that thing up or... Or just sort of float around the mark until a certain someone. Oh, that's that's a nice message for fans. Just Ooh. they're going to just hold for, hold in well, mediocrity for uh, a little they, while. They're going to have to shake it up because that crew they've got there is not working. Twenty twenty. Do they need to shake it up or not? I'm Lakers. surprised that you haven't mentioned the the W word, Russell Westbrook. Mm-hmm. What about him? If they start next season with him anywhere in the vicinity of the team, they're already cooked. Whoa! <laughs> Scathing. They can make it. They can name. Scathing. Can they move him? CG. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone is going to want him as a player, as the main piece in the team. But with expiring contracts and all that jazz yeah. in the league, it could be a uh, a tasty is trade. He, they're on the bit. rebuild. Is he known as a difficult? <laughs> is he known as a difficult teammate? Russell Westbrook. Not so much a difficult teammate is oftentimes he goes it alone a little bit, but he plays his butt off every single time. Two questions. He does. He does. He just, you know, he shows great resilience and, you know, the, the, <laughs> positivity. It's never about his effort. It's more whether his uh, game style and what he brings to a team is redundant. Right. Right. Hey, what do you want? Who's that scarecrow looking rich guy that wears funny clothes that rocks up to every NBA game? Oh, Richard Wilkins. It's. Uh, <laughs> Gold, someone Goldstein or... Do you know what yeah, I'm talking about? I know, the old guy, the guy with the, the long grey hair. The guy who sits next to Jack. Yes. Yeah, to Jack Nicholson. But he's everywhere. He, he looks is, like a scarecrow. He'll be tonight in in Dallas. He he'll be there courtside. everywhere. Yeah. All you right, last one. Last one. We've got, to, we've got to let CG go. Yeah. My friend. <laughs> CG. Our friend. <laughs> Are we going to talk uh, about the elephant in the room, James Harden and, and Philly, before CG goes? Absolutely. Okay, great. What have, what have, you, made of, what have you made of it, Chris? Philly's such a tough place to play, as we saw. Like, they turn on their players. Absolutely. Within the space of three months, James Harden was their saviour, mm. and now it's like he needs to go, he's washed. So tough place to play. He didn't play too well in that last series, though. It's 20. Well. The James Harden experiment in Philadelphia hasn't worked. I'm going to say, I mean, it's not going to be a surprise to anybody, but it's been an absolute unmitigated disaster. Because yep. the 76ers <laughs> thought that they were getting... Houston James Harden. Yeah. <laughs> but instead they got Lamar Odom five years after he retired from the Lakers. Whoa! Whoa. That's big. The Bunny Ranch. <laughs> bunny Ranch Lamar Odom. Never That's forget dangerous. The, the Bunny Ranch. <laughs>
Explain for our younger viewers, younger listeners, what the bunny ranch. Oh, we won't do that. Some, nah. One of the greatest episodes on TV, the bunny ranch. What? When he was on the, uh, when he was in the Kardashians. Kardashians. <laughs> that's right. Did they make an episode of him at the bunny ranch? Yes. Hey, he got lost. I don't miss that. He got. He was driving and got yeah, lost. Yeah. No, he did. No, I know. He ended I up at the bunny ranch. Imminent. I think it's a good night out if you end up in a coma. <laughs> but that's a rule for life. Chris hey. Gordon, we love you. Have a great <laughs> off season. Hope your calf gets in. better. Thanks, See you guys. <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Now, Sam, I know you get cranky at me when I talk about the weather, but all I've got going for me at the moment are simple pleasures. And yesterday's weather was so joy inducing. I had like bursts of endorphins just being out in it, and today's going to be the same. Yeah, glorious. Why is it get all out blooming? In that- it is at the moment, but it'll, it's only 8 o'clock, so it is going to get better. Get out in the sunshine today. Woo! Just makes you feel so good. Sam's got his golf gear on. I'm very jealous. He looks like Johnny Cash. Duh. He's a man in black today. Dead. No, <laughs> no stylish in black polyester. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yes, uh, it's my return to golf after... <sighs> I think it's well, about six weeks. I mentioned that this morning and I was alarmed to hear that it's been six weeks since you've been there. Why? Just family. You're falling out of <laughs> Oh, it's family. I Just, thought you were falling out of love with golf. No, no there's no, been some time pre- there's been some time pressures funny there's you know the, all the all the work and all that you know I just yeah. I just no, I need to retire. Yeah, no, no, all the family. All right, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. Yeah, I'm living so, I'm living at the Olsen. <laughs> 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 For weeks now. Aren't we all? Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Instagram. It's Chrissy Sam and Brownie. I want some tropical stuff. I got plenty. Whoa. If you want a sense of the day, but we'll just whip through them. Who doesn't? A 24-year-old Carlton man has been uh, charged with wedding crashing. It's funny. Detect- mm. <laughs> just think it was just because it's a movie doesn't mean it's you know. It's a great movie. Well, that it's a great movie. One, one of the great. One of the great Fair joys right. of life is recreating scenes from movies. Nine and a half weeks. Am I right? <laughs> no, the, um, obviously not. Detectives have charged a man. But this is the thing, in wedding crashes, they just rolled up and uh, I, I would say, I argue, stole a few hearts, John, those two yes. in that movie, as opposed to this man who he stole gift cards, jewellery and 16000 in cash from the wedding receptions that he attended. Smart. <laughs> Thank you. No Thank you, Your Honour. You lower your guard. No one will question him. They'll just think he's some relative, just the the prize table. Yeah. New York City has removed its last public payphone this week. No more payphones in New York. All those mo- oh. the, the, the the thing where it'll be very noticeable when you're watching an old movie, which not even that old, mm. and they go to a payphone. You're yeah. going, mate. There's no payphones anymore. Well, that's an unusual move because we've just injected more life into ours by making them free, keeping them, and, and making them free. Last time you used yeah. one, Sonny? Uh quite recently because my daughter Peg has this thing where Dino, you know where I'm going here. Every time she passes a payphone, she calls Dino. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Have a great chat. Oh, that's yeah. not disturbing at all. Um, it's I, not Have it's you not ever disturbing. with a payphone, have you ever told someone to call the payphone number, read, read them the serial number to call back or that number? When I was dealing drugs in the 90s, yes, I would often get them just to quick, quickly ring this number. It's a I, great I, scene in movies, isn't it? Yeah. I use it when I'm a fugitive. Oh. Yeah, yeah. you got to then. Mm. I get it. Uh, anyway, they're gone. If you go next time you're in New York, no... Uh, Pay phones. Surprised me with the population size. Yeah. Will Smith. What's he doing? He's had a hellish vision of losing his money and career before the Oscars slap. He was um, David Letterman's uh, uh, chat show mm. on Netflix. My guest, my next guest needs no introduction. Is back for another season. It's a good show that. It is. Mm. Although uh, we saw a bit the other day with Kevin Durant, didn't we, Dino? It was and awesome. There's, yeah, but I think it was filmed in COVID times. There's no audience. It's a bit of a shame. But I don't like to comment on people's appearances, but I prefer Dave Letterman clean shaven. Well, you're objectifying him, and he's got the big white beard. It's unbelievable. Now he looks like a lighthouse attendant, he's and it's awesome. He does, too. <laughs> he does. He does. He looks like Portland Bill. Absolutely. He I, um, lights down at Port Ferry. Yes. Yeah. In the summer. So, I, he's got such a magnificent face mm. that I'm sad that I don't get to see it 
see oh, more of it. Fair I think enough. That's, that's what I mean. No, I'm with you, Swanee, I think. And those fantastic teeth with the gap the, in the middle. Uh, He's got a great face. I've been He's... watching the late night documentary on SBS. I yeah, like him, Clean Show. Mm. Uh, the Netflix did note that this conversation uh, happened well before the Oscars, you know what I mean? And uh, during a two year acting break, I didn't even know he took a break. Mm. No. He visited Peru uh, and went on 14 uh, ayahuasca journeys. This has, got, this has got Jada's idea all over it. This has got it. peyote written all over it, if you know what I mean. They, <laughs> yeah. out, they go, out in the, go out into the desert and uh, totally. you know, just see what happens. Mm. Yeah. And uh, this, is, uh, this is what happened. I start seeing all of my money flying away and my house is flying away and my career is going away. And I'm like, oh, uh, and I'm trying to like grab for my money and my career. And my whole life is getting destroyed. So this is your fear. This is my fear. In real life. And I'm in there, but yeah. I'm in there now. I'm, I'm just wanting to vomit and all of that. And I hear a voice saying, this is what the f- it is. This is what the f- life is. Whoa. That was Jada. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. We're was- <laughs> we not sure about that. Hey, I read his book. <laughs> he sounds unhinged there. It sounds like it was happening. I read his book, and the other 13 times... You said his book was great. I did, and then I'm totally off him because yeah, it's all no. bullshit. Do you feel like you're wasting your time now over holidays reading yeah, that book? absolutely. Oh, that's terrible. You well, were saying how good that book was. I was getting I stuff out. I got it, and then that all happened. I go, I'm not reading that. Well, mm. yeah. He felt like a coward his whole life for not hitting his dad who used to um, uh, hit his mum awfully. So it's all, like, traumatically linked to that why he got up on stage. It's pretty messed up. Well, this chat's taking yeah. a turn. I was, was going to talk, well, about, the, I'm gonna talk yeah. about the wedding couple that uh, went fishing on their, <laughs> on their wedding night. Do you want that? Yeah, don't, keep don't, going. don't let this stop you. A couple in Texas. You know, I don't, like, I've never, we've never been married. So on your wedding night, Brownie, other than the, the, the you know, whatever happens or not happens, mm. is, do you make plans for your wedding night or is it just like, listen... Get say hello to everyone and let's go get out of here. Went to the costume shop on the way. Oh, that mm. seems a bold. <laughs> what did you on get? The way, just to Woody, clarify, Woody on, again? I was a sheriff on the on the way home. Oh, from you your Woody wedding. then? Woody is a sheriff. Mm. This couple in Texas, they had a they had a big night. They just they it was a San Antonio's um, Elliot and Ernie Granville. Uh, they were discussing what to do on their wedding night, and they thought uh, Elliot suggested they go fishing. So they drove to a pier. And then Elliot decided to leave her wedding dress on because she wanted to keep her wedding day going. They arrived and uh, just a few minutes in, Elliot felt a tug. <laughs> From the fish, Christine, fishing, please, be, be better than that. <laughs> and so after about 10 or 15 minutes there, she had just caught a big 40, 50 pounder oh, on her wedding yeah, night. Good. Wow. That's hey, big. that's the way to finish. That's big. Not go to the costume yeah, shop like you. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Finally get to this story about Simon Black. We're talking about jet skis yesterday because I think new bachelors appeared or arrived on a jet ski. Big Osh, the host, rocked up to the set on a jet ski. That's right. And uh, it's reminded me to get this story away about Simon Black, which I've never told before. Uh, Now, about this, I'm going to set the scene. Post his Brownlow medal, 2003 was a pre-season, well, deep in pre-season training. What a player. About a month out. And just remember, Blackie, Brownlow medalist, Norm Smith medalist, 300 gamer, Premiership player, did it and didn't speak a word on about eight weeks of Survivor. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Astonishing. Was that a surprising <laughs> element? Yeah, did you? To you, like... It was bad edit, apparently. That's what he keeps telling me. <laughs> was he more... Yeah, but what do you he... think? You know him well. Yeah, he loves a chat. He's a mm. terrible dancer, but he loves a good chat. Okay. He's one of the nicest men you'll ever meet. Yes. Uh, anyway, Blackie, obviously the height of his career, Swanee. Mm. So coming off a premiership and a brown low medal. That's a pretty good season, isn't it? Absolutely. So obviously you, you handle Blackie with kid gloves. Mm. We're young blokes, though. We're living the dream. Mm. You know, we're 21, 22 years old, pre-season training. Boys, look after yourselves on the weekends. You'd always have Sunday off. What do we get up? Us couple of knuckleheads get up with a mate who's got a wave rider that does over 100 k's an hour. Yes. So what else are you going to do? But you get up at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. When take you it out to Bribey? You no, know, we take it out in the Brisbane River, oh, which at wow. yeah, that hour of the morning, full of bull sharks. Of We're not worried about that, though. We put the donut out the back, the partner donut. So a few of us are involved. 
Uh, one of our mates was driving the uh, wave rider. Mm. I was on the back. I was the spotter. You know, you got to keep an eye if something happens. If they fall off, you got to circle back around. <sighs> and uh, Blackie's, <laughs> oh, Blackie's on the partner, you know, the the dual donor with someone else. And another mate of ours. So we're flying along the Brisbane River, having a great old time. About half an hour in, and then I said to the rider, the driver, just just crank it up a little bit. Yeah, we'll give test, it a bit. We'll yeah. test these boys out. Yeah. And start flinging them over the top of the way because then it starts to bounce and you get airborne. A lot mm. of fun, Swanee. But when you start to get over 100 k an hour, it starts to probably tip <laughs> over into the dangerous area. Oh, now, my God. I would be terrified. I've completely forgotten at this stage that Simon Black, one of the greatest players of all time, is on this partner donor. I'm not worried about old bugger lugs who's beside him. They hit the wake and they fly through the air. Yes. I kid you not. <laughs> they're probably about... I'd say three to four metres in the air, and they <laughs> flip. <laughs> now, our mate, who probably played third division football somewhere when no one cared about him, his hip <laughs> has clipped Lackey on the head. And oh, my God. Obviously, it didn't look great. It didn't look great for my vantage point, so I've said to the uh, driver, quickly circle back around. Did he lose consciousness? Absolutely he lost blood. consciousness. And he, Black, he, he's knocked out. Knocked out, and he copped the biggest slight cut of all time in his eye. So we get to him. He's in the water. We've helped pull him out of the water. So he could have drowned. There is blood everywhere. Blood everywhere. So we're thinking, bull sharks, we've got to get him out of the river. Mm. Get him out of the river, get him to shore. This is 6.30 at this stage on a Sunday morning. Mm. And um, ringing the doctor, obviously, how do you reckon that phone call where we had to get the doctor out of bed? So, doc- Did it start with, this is in the cone of silence, do not tell lethal? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It was a bit hard, though, when he would have required probably 15 stitches. <gasps> Did an amazing job, the doctor. Did the doctor say, uh, what have you done? He said, listen. Basically, what I've done is I've used the I've, le- I've used last year's Brownlow medalist to chum up the water. That's <laughs> 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 pretty much what it That's was. What you've done? Well, you know, my contribution, my medical contribution was though there was so much blood, as you know, any head wounds. Yeah. Right above, so it's right above his eye. I thought he would lost his eye. That's how bad it looked. My contribution. Did you feel s- scared and guilty? Oh, and shocking. Were you like, what was I doing? I, I've had a brain fart. I thought I'm going to get sacked. Here, I'm the reason that yeah. Simon Black's lost his eye, one of the greatest players of all time. <laughs> Lethal's not going to be happy. So I threw him in the back of the old Commodore. I rushed him up to the doctor's clinic. My medical contribution on the way, I didn't know how to stop the bleeding, so I pulled into a 7-Eleven, mm. Starsky and Hutch style, ran in and bought him a Calippo. And he put it, and, and I came out, he's lying in the back of my Commodore, <laughs> and I stuck a Calippo on his eyes. I've got a question. I've got, I mean, that is excellent. Genius. Yeah. I've got a question for you. Earlier on in this show, and in many shows, yes. you have said never apologise. Yeah. I, I want to ask you, <laughs> given that you were responsible for this friend of yours, mm. someone who you very, who you love very much and relied on professionally, given that you were the sole person responsible mm. for him almost losing his eye, almost drowning and being eaten by a bull, bull shark. sharks. Several bull sharks. What a way to go, though. In that situation, did you apologise to your friend? And <sighs> It's a good question. Didn't I didn't they? need to, only because after the whole... Scenario, the mm. whole situation, the doctor had stitched him up. Mm. He turned to me and said, Brownie, if it wasn't for the Calippo, he would have lost his eye. Yeah. You're the hero. Magnificent. You do it all again. You're the, you're the... Magnificent. No, Swanee, I was genuinely worried. I thought, I thought we'd. Uh, yes, I know you were genuinely worried, but were no. you genuinely no. sorry? No. Uh, no, well, he went on the This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Let's go. Todd McKenney, a legend of Australian musical theatre. You may know him from Dancing oh, with the Stars, oh. Mates on a Mission, or The Boy from Oz. He's currently a lead in Cinderella, which you can see at the Regent Theatre. Here's Todd. Hello, Todd McKenney. I got, a, I got an intro. That's like, that's impressive. Oh, that's everyone gets one, though, Todd. Oh, everyone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I won't, well, not I won't everyone. Get, I won't be impressed then. Also, the voiceovers, it's, Average. Not, it's, yeah, it's not, it's, not as its best at the moment. <laughs> Todd, Someone... Cin- Cinderella is at the Regent Theatre. It is. 
has it been reimagined? Because there, I, I've got a problem with some of the messages for girls and women in, in these. Well, you're going to love this tales. one because it has been reimagined and it's been been reimagined in for exactly that reason in, in the right way. So in this version, I won't I won't give too much away because there's a twist at the end of Act One when she runs down the stairs and. The slipper comes off, and mm. but then there's a there's a real twist, and so people go into the foyer at interval, just scratching their heads, going, "Hang on a minute, what's happened?" Um, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but but basically, Cinderella in our version, mm. um, she is in charge of her own destiny. So she's not just running around waiting for some prince to come and grab her up. She decides oh, yes. whether she wants to be with a spoiler the alert. The, the, right, the yes. twist Which is, is really good. It's like in the Sixth Sense. She sees dead people <laughs> and they take Whoa. it over. There, you know what I mean? It's That's like huge. That. That's, That's huge. Much? Wow. That is huge. Yeah, that's big. I've got an equivalent of a glass slipper, um, and I, I don't know whether we've got the audio yet. Have, has anything come in uh, from Brody? Does it have the hook word in it? Look, that's Brody's saying, saying that. Yes, oh, really? it is. Here He's we go. Here, it we go. Is. here we go. Here we go. So this is my equivalent of the glass slipper. If you're not across the fairy tale of Cinderella, I mean, wake yeah. up. But you know, a, a, a glass slipper is left, and then the the prince realizes that the the foot that fits that is mm. his true love. I've yet to find someone that loves this song as much as I do, and when I do, we're going to ru- run off into the sunset together. It. It's by the great Roger Vaduras. Right. This is my glass slipper. Uh. Yeah. You better get used. So you know this song? Does do you anyone? mean if somebody knows this song... It's, You're going to marry them and run if off. If somebody to, goes, oh, my God, yes, that is a great song. I love that song. It's on my playlist. Mm. You know it's never going to happen. They're not, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is Pang's slipper. This is what I say. Yeah. 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 Remember, um, remember when uh, Con the Fruiter had that big yeah, hit from the 90s? This yeah. is a cracker. Do. I do, actually. Hey, full orchestra for this one? Full orchestra? Yeah, full orchestra. Yeah, it's got the bells and the whistles. It's 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 a very glossy show. It's it, you know, Kids are loving it. We got what's, it, what's it dressing. like, Todd, on stage? Because I've never been on stage with a full orchestra in front of me. Oh, it's magical. We yeah. get the best We get the best seat in the house because we get to see the orchestra down below us and we get to hear it, you know, thriving out of the uh, the pit and it's it's like standing in the middle of um, it's something quite romantic, actually. You know, it's it's just to have the strings yeah. and the, you know, the cellos yeah. and the and the, and then the horns and the, it's it's really something special, yeah. Ever since the sort of, you know, restrictions with the pandemic have eased, I get this, like a visceral, like a physical reaction when I hear live music now. I just yeah. enjoy it so much. For for a performer, what was that like for you to to be back performing again? Well, it was exactly that. It was like reimagining and mm. refinding your love of it, you know. Because I've been doing this since 1983, yeah. and so. Getting a little jaded, you know. But um, it, was kind of, it was kind of nice. Um, insert My air cigarette here. Um, no, but it was kind of nice to have that break because I never would have actually given myself that break, unfortunately. It was due to a pandemic. But yeah. it was nice to have that distance from it. And then when we came back, and I think everybody in the arts feels the same, mm. the first you know, strike of the chord of the first job back was really quite thrilling and, yes. and for the audiences as well. Do you yes. have a backup person? We had... Uh, his name, uh, Jimmy Jeter. Jimmy Jeter was in the other day. Who's the Hamilton? He's the Swiss Army knife of Hamilton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if one of the guys goes down and one of the girls goes down, he steps into that role. Yeah. Do you have well, that person? Yeah, we got a few of them. We've got um, a couple of um, people who cover all of the girls' roles, so they've got to learn every role in the show. That's amazing. It's the first guys. time I'd heard the term a swing. A swing. A swing. Yeah, yeah. So they swing. So if somebody goes off and somebody goes off mid-show. Um, that person scrambles to their dressing room, chucks on a face and gets up there and has to know that role instantly. So they've got to learn 10, 12 but roles. That is a it's miraculous the, It's actually skill. the hardest job in the show yeah. because normally people get through the previews, the whole cast sort of stays together and gets through the previews and opening night. Mm. So these guys, for want of a much better word, the workhorses who really have to learn, you know, 10 times everybody else's workload. Yeah. It's like an emergency umpire, when, you know, if an umpire yeah, gets yeah. injured, then they come on. Yeah, right? in sequence. 
Hey, um, but Todd. can we just talk about the glass slipper, though? Don't you reckon the glass slipper is the most impractical, stupid shoe you would ever want to wear? A hundred percent. And I've, what is this? I've always thought that ever since I was little because I've got a huge foot and yeah. I thought I would smash that glass slipper. And, and if the shoe fit that woman so well, then why did it fall off in the first place? Exactly. Oh, yeah. There are big questions to be answered in this. You'll get no disagreements from, uh, no disagreements from Swanee because has been known to wear Birkenstocks on a red carpet. <laughs> The Logies. I have. Oh, also, really? couldn't it break and cut a major artery and kill you? Absolutely. 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 Jesus. It could. They haven't thought this through at all. Uh, how'd you go with our boy Sam on have you been paying attention? Well, funnily life? enough, when I told the cast I was doing it, everybody said to me, you look out for Sam. Mm. Mm. And that was the, out of all, everybody on the panel, they said, Oh, is Sam on it? Is Sam on it? Is Sam on yes. it? Well, he's a big and fan of your, uh, then, he's a big fan of your work in Mates on a Mission. No, you're not, are you? What oh. did you do? Did you slam me? I did not. I did. He I did slammed not. me to the wall. He did, Todd. He, he did. did. He did. He did. Todd. All right, did go not. there now. Say it to my face. No, I had nothing. I had nothing but good thoughts to say about your season. I was just curious whether. My idea for what Chelsea. do you mean your season? It's he's on it. No, he's got a separate season. Season two, Sam. I said. I was, oh, I was, you're doing I, season two. No, I'm not doing season two. <laughs> but the, the, I, I was curious, and I asked these guys if they thought that Channel Seven should for season two go because they went with uh, you, BT, Chris Smith, and Shay Jacobson. Yeah, they did. Season two. Andrew O'Keefe, Pete Evans, Ben Robert Smith, and Craig McLaughlin. Mate, who's not watching that, <laughs> Todd McKinney? Who's not watching that? <laughs> That's cast. all I'll say. Big oh, cast, no. season two. They're on a mission. I'd, They're definitely on a yeah. mission. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd actually <laughs> I'd watch it. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> of course you would. Hey, I'd I'll, I'll, I've got to ask you this, though. Not about Mates on the Mission. Right. The television game show that you hosted called <laughs> You May Be Right. Well, as Sonia Kruger called it after the first episode, You May Be Axed. <laughs> <laughs> What can you just tell us? What explain that for those who didn't no, see it? What, what was it was it? the what world's like? worst game show with the world's worst host. Um, that we were trying to, I think, in retrospect, not not me. I was just an employed host. Yeah, like, mm. I had nothing. How did it work? Though? To How do with it, 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 well, it didn't work. That's why I was asked. <laughs> but, <laughs> the, um, Brad Lyons, who was the executive producer of that show. So it was a quiz show. They were trying to do their version of Spicks and Specs, but with me. Yeah, okay. And um, I think they were giving me a go of doing something other than dancing. And But, but it wasn't Spicks and Specs. It was nothing like Spicks and Specs. Um, it was Spicks and Specs without all the good bits. <laughs> <laughs> and then Brad Lyons, who was one of the executive producers yeah. of the show yeah. and ran Channel 7 at the time, he said to me, I'm the only host that's ever rung him up and asked if their show could be taken off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had good awareness. How many how many yeah. apps did it last? How many apps did We did six, but people only watched two. Right. Mostly people only watched the first one. Half of that amount watched the second one and then nobody pretty much <laughs> the rest. I'm obsessed now. I want to know. Who else was on it with you? Um Akmar was on one of them. Um I can't remember. No, it's Todd, can you watch my bits? Can you get us the lost <laughs> episodes so we can just watch it? Yeah, here? yeah, yeah, I'll send it yes. to you. Fantastic. Well, Todd's got amnesia from that period of his life. <laughs> hey, so Cinderella, sorry, Dana, it started last week. Uh, well, we open tomorrow night, but we're in previews at the moment. So, yeah. you're... oh, that's exciting! Yeah, you know, it's really great. Yeah. It's, just... it's at the Regent Look, Theatre. It's such a beautiful space, and it's, it's so the lovely perfect to space be back. for it. And some gr- amazing performances. Um, uh, Tina Bursell, who was from Doctor Doctor, you know, she's on mm. that. She's in it. She plays the wicked stepmother. Yeah, a great actress. Um, a great could you actress. Bring the kids? Could you bring the kids? Oh God, yeah. It's yeah. full of kids. It's full of kids in tiaras and, and boys in little suits with bow ties, and it's, it's very sweet. Hey Brownie, sorry yeah, once yeah, again. Yeah, there, last one. Yeah. I just wanted to know. If you wanted to ask Todd your famous well, I question, I don't know if I've Does asked it... him this question, but I should because you've been around for a long time. And we normally ask film stars. I'm nervous. You are mainly a, you know, a theatre star. Okay. You're a theatre star. Theater. Star, theater. Star, theater. star of theatre. Uh, Todd McKinney, how do you remember your lines? Oh, you just go through. You just practice them. It's a bad question. You just man. practice them. <laughs> you, just you, practice just, them. <laughs> you just read them again and again and again and again and again. Yeah. Hey, it's still a better answer than Samuel L. Jackson. What did he say? Well, he swore. He said it's my job. But he had a he had a, he had an info. That swear word in between. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, it is hard. It's it's just one of those things. You can't do anything else while you're learning your lines because you've got to just read the script. So you can't. Do the washing or the, the yeah. gardening or the whatever. Because some actors just say they they record all the other actors' lines and then they leave a gap and then they talk in between oh, yeah. the lines. Yeah, it's a lot of effort. Just like a megalomaniac, I think. Yeah. Someone who wants to play all the roles. Todd, so this has been fun. Please come back uh, whenever. Cinderella. Cinderella Musical. dot com. dot au. It's at the Regent. It's going to be great. Have a good one. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Todd.
Brown, Eric for sure will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, Eric. Unless it's a weekend. Here's the 100.